Hi everyone, it's Heather here. I'm going to show you some stuff that I've just found in my craft room. I was tidying up yesterday um, with the intention actually of finding some small embellishments so that I could do the altered jigsaw puzzle pieces like Tina did on her channel the other day. And um, I hit the jackpot because I found this rather large box. It was stuffed full of all sorts of things which I've now sorted out. And at the bottom of it, I'll just show you here look at that an absolute bounty of buttons and little tiny punches I'm so pleased so I'll be using those in the video shortly and I'm just spending some time this morning which I shouldn't be doing really because it's procrastinating not doing my work but I'm just sorting them out into this little case so that I can use them later in the altered puzzle pieces so how amazing is that so that was such a find for a Tuesday afternoon when I was tidying the craft room I had a whole corner of items that I hadn't touched in well over a year well over a year because I didn't need to I'd sort of pack them away and shoved them in the corner well I'm so pleased I found them again because now I'm going to be able to make use of them so that's fantastic I shall see you again in a moment hi everyone it's Heather I'm back um, I've Hopefully I've just inserted a clip showing some buttons that I found. I've been clearing out the craft room and I've just I've finished sorting them out. I did that yesterday, so I've got all my little tiny buttons um, in there. Well, not all of them, but quite a lot of them. And what I intend to do today is some of these altered um, jigsaw puzzle pieces. Now these are actually die cuts, so they're not from a puzzle. I just cut out. Now it's still, I think, applicable to junk because I'm using the scrap paper and also some scrap um, board that I have a lot of because of the sort of things that I do um, and also while I was having that tidy out I found these gorgeous um, little embellishments I'm going to be using a few of those um, I found some felt shapes so I might be using some of those and some little punched hearts um, this is from my doll making days which I uh, doll making and doll clothes making so I've got a lot of sort of little um, fabric ribbon roses and some gorgeous silk ribbons and things like that and lace so I'll be using that these are all things that I found when I was I knew they were there but just forgot sort of exactly what I'd got and then I've got this massive case here uh, which is double sided so you can see through there there's some buttons but absolute prize this side the tiniest buttons ever I'm going to open this to show you because it's an absolute joy sorry about the noise that that makes but rattly look at those wow the colours I just love this the little tiny buttons um, and different shaped buttons so these are absolutely minuscule you can see there I'm sorry the light's a little bit bright coming through the um, Velux window at the moment so I apologise if that's creating a big glare. It's certainly hurting my eyes at the moment, so hopefully that'll dip down a little bit in a minute. Um, so there's those, and I've also got a few things that I made um, and purchased. I probably won't be using these ones here. I've got little ballerinas and little handbags. They're not quite the style I would go for, but I've got little um, coiled felt roses and some butterflies there with music sheet on and some um, Fimo or Fimo or however you say it, birds uh, and butterflies. So I might be using those as well. So, I mean, fantastic. I found all these wonderful things. What I'm gonna do now is just pull a few of those things out, pop them in the tray that I usually use for crafting, and I'm going to make some of those um, altered puzzle pieces. So, Right, I'm back. So I've sorted out a few embellishments. I've got them in my tray and I've got a little bit of um, tissue paper and a tiny bit of doily as well. I'm sure I won't be needing much for this project, but I have sort of separated them into different colour styles. I'll see what I use. Uh, these are the three different styles of um, puzzle shapes um, and they're all on one die, so obviously they are supposed to fit together like that. I think it's an all-style, it's an all-star die. I've had for a number of years, barely ever use it. So this is fun. Uh, and what I've done is separate um, some of the scraps that I cut out as well uh, into those shapes. So 
uh, I've just kept my little jar as it is because I'm not sure what I'm going to be using out of that and obviously I've kept my buttons as they are so I can pick out of that as well. Right then, so just to try and make a few of these nice and quick and easy, um, oh, I haven't got my ink, I'm just... Okay, so I've grabbed the ink, which is a staple ingredient, obviously, and um, in case I wanted to add some gold highlights rather than something to rub around it, I thought I might try the gold pilot pen because that worked really well with that journal page. So let's give this a go. Okay, now, as I remember what Tina did, she used um, a book page. Well, I've got script, uh, music script, so she used word script rather, and I'm using music sheet. So I'll pick out some music sheet for each of my pieces. She used that on one half. Now I don't have the pictures in front of me. So I'm just sort of going with what I've already cut out and well hopefully that will look good. They're not particularly vintagey papers because uh, like I say I was just using some scraps from my scrapbook um, stash. Um, yeah that'll do. Okay so what she did was she tore them so that you had half um, uh, half book page and half other paper from recollection. So I'm going to try that. Although what I could do is just adhere all of this down. So I might do that. And then add just a torn piece of scrapbook paper. So we'll give that a go. I'm of course referring to uh, Tina at Shabby Dabby Doo Dar. You probably all follow her videos. And I'm just doing similar to something that she did. And she got the idea from Pinterest. I really probably should have uh, an image to um, base this off, but I haven't printed anything off. so. Let's do that with all of them. This is just a quick make, really. And if I can stop going and fetching things, it should be fairly quick video. Just want to see how they turn out, because I've never done them before. I don't tend to do this sort of thing. I think it's, it's quite time consuming, and I don't have that much time to play. But it would be nice to have a few of them as embellishments because I thought they were so cute. Well, music sheets obviously that way up. I don't think it matters really, does it? There we go. It was very nice finding all those buttons though. I was so pleased. I knew I had all this stuff sort of in the bottom and I was actually procrastinating over tidying it up uh, because it, it was tidy but I couldn't get to it because of the rolling cart in the way so it was just taking up a whole shelf all these different boxes and I couldn't get to it and I knew that the bottom box was absolutely crammed full of stuff that I just shoved in there um, it's a massive box it's actually for, um, for it was food use it's huge this box was and I think you it's got like a divider so you can sort of put buns and bakery goods. We bought quite a few of them and the others are being used as sort of file boxes in the garage. Um, but I kept this one in the craft room and it was absolutely rammed with stuff. Um, sentiments and cards, stamped card and things like that. A lot of it I probably won't ever use and to be honest I'll probably get rid of it but I've sort of sorted it out into um, sort of matching units now so that there's a chance I will use it but I've decided if I haven't used it in the next six months it's all going to go uh, but the buttons that fantastic because you you I've got, actually got rid of most of my buttons I gave them to my niece 
Um, I had a huge tin, in fact, a huge drawer full of buttons uh, that I'd sort of collected over the years and bought second hand and whatnot, a lot of vintage stuff. And I actually got to the point where I'd got all this um, reclaimed sort of jewellery stuff and buttons and whatnot. And it was actually more of a burden because I couldn't use it. It was really making my head spin. So I got it all out, literally got it all out. I didn't sort any of it out at all. Put it in a box and give it to my niece. Um, and all my, um, a lot of my scrapbooking card. I had a huge amount of scrapbooking card and paper and stamps, uh, polymer stamps. Uh, that I just didn't use, they all got boxed up and given to my cousin to give to my auntie because she's a scrapbooker and card maker and I felt so much better for getting rid of it. It cleared out the craft room a huge amount, obviously I still have a huge amount left but it made such a difference to how I felt um, just clearing stuff out and it was perfectly usable stuff, really good quality but I just couldn't have it in the room anymore, it was really hampering my creativity and dare I say doing my head in. Um, so it was a really good thing to get rid of it. So I've still got a lot of stuff left, don't worry. I have plenty of stuff to be creative with. But um, that's why I, so I got rid, I actually sold most of my felting stuff. Um, and um, a lot of fabric I gave to my mum. Um, so I don't know why I had so much stuff. It's like, dare I say, it's like a mental illness almost. The need to compulsively hoard pretty things. Right then, so moving on to this, uh, what I'm going to do is just tear that and have that as a half. Shall we go with that torn on there? That looks pretty. And if we Let's, what I might do is just ink that up, I can't help myself. I'm so sorry, I really should turn that off, shouldn't I? That's Etsy. So I'll just ink up. My daughter's working beautifully in the other room. Being all quiet and getting on with things. That looks nice just as it is, doesn't it? she's homeschooling but of course was it yesterday I don't know the day's blur uh, we've got wind that they'll be going back to school sort of in the next couple of weeks so that'll be nice for her to see her friends again um, well I'll get back to some form of normality at home probably but I've loved having her here and it's it's really good sort of having the kids at home. Things are a bit more relaxed now. Now we're sort of used to the routine. And she's getting on with her work. That's the younger one, the older one just gets on with her stuff anyway. It'll be a bit sad really when they go back. I don't know how people sort of homeschool normally and um, whether they have like a set curriculum. We've just been using the stuff the school send through and I've, I'm sort of, I have a, a couple of subscriptions that I use as well which have been brilliant. Twinkle's been absolutely marvellous, that's super. And also um, Ed Place, we have that but we've not used that at all really in this last lockdown. Um, but I think it would be nice if you were sort of learning at your own pace. It's actually been quite pressured this last this last uh, lockdown because the schools were very insistent that a certain amount of work was produced and shown, which, you know, obviously it should be, but um, it felt a lot more pressured than the first time. So I don't know whether that's what it's like normally for people homeschooling. My daughter gets on with things, but it seems to take her a lot longer to do things in the time that they suggest. I think there's a certain amount of procrastination, but it's not it's not always that. I think she just wants to do a good job. Um, and therefore it takes a little bit longer than they say it should. 
I think if you put a bit more detail in, it probably does take longer. And I'm proud of both my girls because they want to do a good job. So that's that's really good. Just stick that on there. I think if I'm going to make this a quick video, I might not use half this stuff. What I did want to do though is sort out um, the smaller embellishments that could be used on them because I do remember from Tina's video she'd cut out a load of flowers um, to go on uh, like her Pinterest inspiration picture but the flowers were all too big and I thought ah oh, okay so if I'm going to do this project then I need to make sure I've got lots of tiny embellishments which is nice because it's nice work in miniature as you know I like dolls and I've made things for dolls in the past so it's really nice to, to do things sort of in, in tiny scale because I do like tiny scale. Now they look really cute. I really like those. Um, so what I might do is do the bases for three more and then start decorating them up. I really like those, I do. Okay, so we're gonna probably go with maybe the same background. I have got these tissues papers. I was thinking of maybe using some tissue paper but I could always use those to layer up. Good nice. So I think we'll do the same as we did before. I wonder whether I could just, I mean this would be a little bit, um, a bit cheeky wouldn't it but I could always use the other halves of those and that would be brilliant wouldn't it. Let's get the right ones on there. That will be making the most of every scrap. I'm sort of toying with the idea of putting these die cuts, some of the die cuts in the shop. So if you see this video, take a quick look at the shop, Gypsy Crafter Journals on Etsy. The link will be below. I don't normally link things, but I will link it. And then if you're interested, you can just do a quick project as well. I'm not going to do many because... Um, to be honest with you, the time taken to cut them out uh, could be time I could spend doing something else. They're not, um, I don't think they're going to be a permanent feature in the shop. But I'll pop, I'll pop some, I'll, I'll cut some out so that I've actually got some available. Bag them up and then when they're gone, they're probably gone. Unless of course they prove to be really popular. But um, obviously I won't charge a lot for them because just bits of card at the end of the day but they do take time to cut out so. so if you like the idea of doing it but can't be bothered to cut round puzzle pieces you see that was the bit with um, Tina's video well, I've seen her do these things but there's no way I'm going to cut round a puzzle piece um, because that's too laborious so knowing of course that I had the die cutting die that would work with this. I have got a whole puzzle die cutter as well that I don't know what I've done with that. I think it must be in the garage. I'll have to go and have a look. Um, yeah, knowing that I had the die cutter, I thought, you know what, I can cut out some of those steps. That'll make it easier because I still want to do it. I still want to play along and make something pretty. I just can't be bothered spending hours cutting around puzzle pieces although I think if I was going to be doing it I didn't have a die cutter and I just had puzzle pieces what I would do is let me grab a scrap instead of doing what she did in the video I would take a scrap of card and I would draw around it or draw around it that way draw around it and and then pussy cut on there so let's see how quick this is to do it's accurate. It probably won't be quite as accurate as a die cutter. Um, and what, what Tina did was she had scraps of paper and she tore scraps of paper like that and stuck them on and then cut round. Uh, sorry, I keep getting off camera. She stuck the scrap of paper onto the puzzle piece. Well, first it was like a reclaimed puzzle piece, so she sanded it down. Then she stuck the piece of paper on there and then cut round with a craft knife. Now, if I did that, I would probably cut myself because I'm, a bit, I'm not great 
cutting things out with scalpels and whatnot. But I think if I was going to do it with um, abandoned puzzle pieces uh, rather than the die cuts, I would literally just draw the image on and then I would just fussy cut. Now these are quite simple puzzle pieces, whereas some of the ones she was using, even though they were from a child's set, they're actually quite um, ornate, so more jaggedy bits out and in. Right, so let's see what that looks like. Pretty rubbish cutting. Yeah, so that to me would be a nice quick way of doing it, and then you can just cut it down a little bit more. And instead of um, instead of having to cut around it when it's actually stuck on there, you see it still takes a little bit of time to do, doesn't it? Oh, it's a bit of a time suck, really. Oh no, I really made a hash of that now. But that you you understand what I mean. Anyway, that's what I, I would have done had I not had my die cutter, which I do have, so it has saved me a lot of time. Let's put those away. And some people are probably better at fussy cutting. Plus you'd have your little scissors, wouldn't you? Those big scissors aren't brilliant for that. Okay, so now we've got those, don't need that one. Um, and we are going to, I'm going to keep the white it because I think that inks up really nice and I'm literally just going to do what I did with these ones. I'm just going to ink around my puzzle piece and this will be nice because these will be quite cohesive now if I was going to be using these in a in a journal with a specific idea of using them in a journal I would have picked out colours specifically to go with that journal because you know what I'm like I do like matchy matchy and I want and I want things that go although having said that these colours are quite uh, generic aren't they they're quite neutral I did pick out some sort of darker colours uh, for decoration but I'm not sure they'll particularly go with the scraps that I've got so later on I might make some more up using sort of darker colours although I could easily just use those on the craft and maybe just stamp on them because again that's a good alternative isn't it just stamping on the puzzle pieces and maybe using glossy accents or something or just using the um, just using the oops, do a little bit more on there. the tissue, the brown tissue would be nice. Maybe stamp script stamp onto onto that. I don't actually have a script stamp. I'm going to have to have a look and see what I've got in my stash. Right then, let's stick these down. This was supposed to be a quick video, but it won't be, will it? I'm enjoying myself, so I've hardly got any orders. I mean, apart from the itching that just went, I did most of my orders this morning. So I thought, you know what, let's have a bit of me time as the children seem to be occupied. Oh no, what have I just done? I think I must have used this for the wrong one. How bizarre. Oh my goodness, that is crazy. I've obviously done, can you see? Look at that, how bizarre. 
I've obviously used the wrong one. That must have been for that one. And this one for... Yeah, that one. So that's a bit crazy. So now I've got a piece of... Right, that's how that's going to look. If I just tore that down, that's going to be weird, isn't it? I'm going to do it anyway. Here we go. How does that look? That is a bit odd, isn't it? I'm going to do it anyway, because I can't be bothered to cut another piece. Right, there you go. So, if you're using these, learn from that mistake. Because that's a bit crazy. That's good there, because there's still quite a lot of the um, music sheet showing through. And actually, now, I think what I might do is add a little bit more of this, because I won't feel like I'm covering up too much then. That's great. Okay. Baby wipe. Clean my fingers, because that will drive me crazy if I don't. Ooh. And a little bit of kitchen roll to dry them. Right, how long have we been filming for? Nine minutes and there was a little bit more. So, what I will do now, I think, is just layer up a little bit because I can't help myself. A little bit of doily, I think. A little bit of doily on there. And a little bit of doily on there. And get rid of that rubbish. Actually, I've got this dark doily. I might be able to make that one into a darker one. So let's pop the, the lighter doily on there. And a bit of the darker doily on there. Go with some of the darker doily on there. That's lovely. Bit of that on there. And just to use up that little bit of doily, maybe. Um, actually, I did want to use some of this cream tissue. See what that looked like. This is very random, isn't it? So, I think, I think these up. Oh, I think my daughter's on break time. Excuse me a moment. Yeah, she's going on her break. She's texted me, so bless her. She's only in the next room. She's obviously popped downstairs to get her break snack. Let's see if that will look better. Mm, not loving that. completely forgotten now what the original pieces looked like so I'm just going with it whatever so let's stick these down oops glue everywhere Right. 
we don't want to be sticking to the work surface. Okay, let's give this a tiny bit of blue. I only want that in the middle because I want the edges to sort of stick up a tiny bit. Does it? There we go. Although, if I leave that sticking up, it's bound to get caught. So, oh, well, that's gone. And the last bit here. Oh, I think we'll add a little bit of ribbon. So we've got all those layered up and that would be cute, wouldn't it? A little bit of ribbon down there. I'm trying hard not to just think too much. About this. Just go with the flow. And just make something that looks pretty rather than being obsessed with how it comes out. It's just a bit of fun, isn't it? A quick make. Now we did say we were going to use some of the darker colours, so that clashes a little bit, doesn't it? Right, that'll do on there. I quite like that on there, actually. a little bit of a bit of seam binding. Do I prefer the dark? Do I prefer the light? Okay, we're gonna go with the light. Right, let's stick those down. If you were going to make these, what would you put on them? What tiny embellishments do you have in your stash that you think would work well? The buttons, obviously, are beautiful. The ones Tina did, um, or the ones she saw on Pinterest, had um, little... Oh, I had a little bee on it, a really tiny bee. So I don't know whether that was a bead or something like that. Beads might work. Maybe a little fussy cut 
insects just to sort of show how tiny something is. Yep, that's all those done. So now let's see what we're going to put on the top because they're looking cute, aren't they? Looking cute. I don't know what happened there, whether it stopped recording or whether I did that by accident. Anyway, um, so we've got the dark ones at the top and looks cute, doesn't it? And the light ones at the bottom. That looks nice. No, I don't know actually the best glue to use with these because they're FIMO, FIMO, whatever, however you say it. The polymer clay basically. Um, so I need to make sure all the glue I'm using will be okay. I know super glue works, but certain sort of double sided tapes and whatnot I've used in the past and they literally just fall off after a certain amount of time because in it sort of degrades the glue. So you have to be really careful the things that you use. That's cute. Let's sink that up. Yeah, so uh, that can be a bit of a shock to the system. If something just falls off <laughs> your embellishment. A bit embarrassing. Don't want that happening. Um, no, they're too proud, aren't they? Now these colours are lovely, like that, that does sit a bit proud. You know what, the hot glue would have been so much better with these. I really like that, that's cute. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. I may end up going out of shot in out of light. Okay, so that looks cute. Maybe add a button. Those are cute. Oh, you can't really see I'm going to have to go out a little bit. So, that is lovely. I like that there, but I really should be using hot glue for something like that, I think. So, we could try sticking it down. Let's stick it down anyway. Let's see. I think I was overestimating the number of embellishments. I need it. I'll stick that there. I think I'm going to need something round the edge now because that looks a bit messy to me. So I don't know what I'm going to put round there. Um, I don't know. I really don't know. Right, we're going to give this a go and I'll let you know whether 3 in 1 craft glue will stick polymer clay. Because it might not. It might fall off, literally. I'll have to Google list of glues that can be used for polymer clay. Right, so they're on. Just move those to one side. Do I want that dimension or no? No, I don't. I'm going to stick it down both sides. And the little tiny, tiny flower. Okay, now I think because we found the buttons, we need to use them, don't we? Let's pop. Which ones? Which one shall we use? Oh, it's a little flower button. Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, it's going to be too big. It's going to be too proud. What a shame.
Now you see, I'm trying to put too many on there because I'm excited that I've got them. I'm preferring the lighter ones. That doesn't look right. Put another light. Let's see. We've got another light one. We don't want two identical, do we? Um, now, will that... Oh, that's going to be too purpley, but... Excuse me reaching over. Too purpley. What a shame. No, not quite right. Oh, I need to find another... Oh no, that's not too bad. Let's move those around. Okay, they're cute. So I'll go with that. And this one, I think actually could take a nice bright pink button. This is a hint of pink on the flower there. This one, oh I haven't stuck that down, let's see. Let's put, stick that down. Oops, I'm thinking for this one, maybe something in the middle, because um, we have all this lovely trim. What sort of colour? Maybe. Yeah, so we'll go with those, I think. We'll just sneak two of those on there. Oh, that's pretty. Um, I think, yes, just go with it. There we go. Stick a little bit of glue on. The problem with this stuff is, if it's kept all bright, it takes a while to come out, doesn't it? Well, I'm going to stick that down there before we decide to change your minds. Pretty. Uh... Might even be able to maybe use a button. I don't know. What do you think? Is that that a bit overkill? Yeah, we're going to go with it. Let's do it. Cute. Um, we can stick this one down. Obviously they're so tiny you can't really get a great deal on them. But I feel like I've got to make a bit of an effort as I've found all these lovely things. That's those. That's oh sorry. Blurring you out there. So that's really cute. So let's put that to one side. With a scrap. I feel like we could probably get something else on there. Like a word or something. I might come back with some words in a little while. That one, I love that one, that's my favourite. Okay, and these three, we've stuck that one on, we've stuck those on, so now we need something else. Let's have a look in, in here, so it's like a soft lilac, these tie little. Maybe pop that one up there. Oh, actually... Oh, that one will go there, that's beautiful. And not these ones, because they've got little tiny pearls in. Oh, these are just adorable. Sorry, I'm starting to whisper now, just because I'm like in, in this zone. That's beautiful, I like that there. Um, 
these little trims from a gorgeous shop um, it's just a fantasy land it really is it's amazing it's like one of those old-fashioned sweet shops with drawers and drawers of buttons and beautiful embellishments absolutely love the place I can't remember what it's called whether it's still around because I bought these a number of years ago I quite like that there actually it's quite bulky but I like the yellow and it's sort of hiding the fact that that one's on the side um, although does that look odd does that look odd there it's a bit, I don't know I don't know whether it'll even stay there. Maybe a little bit of scrunched. Yeah, let's go with that actually. That would look cute, wouldn't it? Let's cut that. Yeah, it's a beautiful shop. It really is amazing. You can go in and just buy one button if you want. I like that. That's lovely. Um, and I used to go in when I did a different job on my lunch break. I used to pop in and it was the only thing that kept me going in the day. A trip to this gorgeous shop to buy some fabric or some buttons or some trim. Honestly, it made my day. Just loved it. Long time ago there. Oh, that's quite sticky there, so now I think I do need to put something on top of it just to sort of mute that stickiness. Let's see if these one of these will work. Yeah, a bit odd but we're gonna go with it. Let's pop in a little bit of glue. Hmm. Yes, that's lovely. It's quite dimensional. I like that now I think we can probably go with something at the top now can't we? And I wonder maybe one of these. Colour wise, do you think there you go? Maybe the blue. Although that's going to be a bit clashy. Maybe the yellow. I did like the yellow with that other flower, so let's cut a little yellow one off. These are very Easter colours, aren't they? The blues and the yellows. Yes, we'll pop that one at the top. Now I'm fairly sure I'm going to come back and put some words on these. I'm not sure whether I've got anything appropriate, so I'm going to stop the video in a minute and then I'll have pictures of what I've done afterwards. Did I stick that down? I didn't stick that down. I'll have pictures of what I've done afterwards so that you can see the finished product. Am I off screen? There we go. And you'll see what I've chosen because I really like these so that this one's lending itself to peace isn't it so I shall get some word stickers and stick those on that's lovely I like that this last one here now I could of course pop a few little flat back pearls and things like that in place as well a couple of little tiny flat back pearls like at the top. Although I've just spotted the tiny, tiny buttons. Actually, I think that would go nicely. Which one shall we use? Oh my goodness, they're so tiny, they're just sticking to my fingers. Can you see how tiny they are? So I have. That one, excuse me, leaning over. A little star. A little pink star. Would look cute on there, maybe. Oh, that's my stomach, I apologise. Maybe those two on, on there. They're so tiny, you can barely see them, but they're just adorable. Right, let's pop a little bit of glue on there, pop a little bit of glue on there. Now oh, the 
this is where you need a pickup tool, isn't it? Maybe we should have a third there because things in threes. Didn't use any of the little punches. Yes, let's go with that one. Hopefully there's enough glue to hold those. Right, so that is absolutely gorgeous. I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit more on these three rather than holding them up. But let's go down. Oh, they are just adorable, aren't they? So that's those three. If I can just move that slightly. Get those in shot and then the final three. Oh no I can't quite see all of them in the one shot I'll just zoom out again. Tiny bit. Oh I hope this isn't making me dizzy. Not great with the camera so please forgive but there you go so that's it that's the finished article really happy with those. I will come back and add a few words I think on them but I'm really pleased with how they have turned out. So thank you very much, Tina, Shabby Dabby and the person on Pinterest, whoever you are, that did the altered um, puzzle pieces. They're really great. Um, I will add some of the blanks and the scrap card offcuts. They'll just be random, so you can buy them if you want, and that way you can do them like I did without having to worry about um, cutting round puzzle pieces which is a bit of a nightmare uh, but rest assured if you're using them in junk channels I am using scraps so that's good so it's still classed as junk in my opinion so thanks very much for joining me I hope you enjoyed it um, have a quick look uh, at the pictures hopefully that will follow this video um, and I might post in friendly junk journal um, group and um, Hopefully you're having some fun and getting a chance to maybe do some altered puzzle pieces of your own. Thanks for joining me. If you enjoy this type of video, I'm sorry I'm always a little bit rambly, but that's just the way I am. So uh, if you do like this type of video, please do give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that notification bell if you want to see future videos from me. Um, take care everybody, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!